come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks again for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, which comes at you every Saturday night from a dank, dark basement in a location that hasn't been disclosed. It's Colin's house. Collins basement. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Mystery. The bubble <laughs> has been broken. Um, yeah, so it's a movie review podcast. Hopefully you know that already by listening to it. Uh, we have uh, 200 and some odd episodes on iTunes. Some Future of them good. Radio. <laughs> some of them are very good. <laughs> some are even right. listenable, yeah, I was going to say. Some have good audio quality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some yeah. of them just yeah spiraled so, into madness yeah, like our indeed. last one unfortunately some are lost yep. yeah lost some are a half and, yeah. hour long <laughs> uh, so who are these amazing people who are going to be talking about tonight's movie Michaela Holly Sean and I'm the aforementioned Colin of the basement the yes. basement dweller <laughs> and tonight the movie was chosen by Sean me Sean what you were almost going to shout your name out right yeah, I saw it's like almost there. Sean me Sean. What'd you watch, or what do we watch tonight? Uh, 1990s Darkman, directed by Sam Raimi. What would we know? Written by from? Sam Raimi. I mean, many things. <laughs> Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, mm-hmm. Army of Darkness, Simple uh, Plan, and Simple the Plan, gift. No, okay. uh, For Love of the Game. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> uh, Drag Me to Hell. Spider Man yeah. One, Two, and Three. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, Oz the Great. Oz, and powerful. yeah. Who did I? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is Dark Man, 1990. You said, okay. Yeah. So this uh, kind of it. We would describe this as maybe a superhero type origin story. True or false? True, because Sam Raimi wanted to make a superhero movie. They wouldn't let him have the shadow. Why not? I don't know. They didn't think he could. Uh, I guess he wasn't like. It's a property they just didn't want to give to Sam Raimi. I don't know. He'd only a, done like up till Evil Dead Two at this point. When did they do the Shadow? Universal Pictures did it. Yeah, it was like, like two thousand four. Oh, did they do a what? Yeah, the one with Alec. Yeah. Oh, that one's the other one's the Spirit. My bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this no, this the movie Shadow came out at a time when they're like the. In the '90s, when they were taking like '30s and '40s superheroes that were like that, that were like radio shows, mm-hmm. and no one really gave a shit about, and making them into movies, like you had the Shadow, the mm-hmm. Phantom, the mm-hmm. of British Avengers, Phantom you know, all oh these yeah, came out in the '90s, the you know? Zorro came Zorro. back, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Zorro. So, very true. Yeah, it was a weird time for comic book movies. I remember the Avengers. Well, for you kids listening, there was a time before the Avengers, known as the pre-Marvel cinematic era, mm-hmm. right? Is that its official title? No, that's what we're saying. Naming it. Not- Trademark the Saturday Night Freak Show 2017. I think we get sued for that one, Colin. <laughs> the, the pre, but sure. Pre-Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, so, They made movies back in the day. That's yeah, pretty much what we can say. But not necessarily comic book superhero movies. No. Not necessarily. Just we're, kind of uh, characters who were, I guess they were trying to make larger than life their own superheroes, especially if they couldn't get... Rights to certain ones, like at this time, what, Batman came out the year before? Yeah. Which is another one that Raimi wanted. He's like, I want the Shadow or Batman or anything like that. You can kind of tell that that is what he wanted because, I mean, this is basically a Batman movie. It's basically a combination of Batman and RoboCop, if you look at it. Did they shoot, like, some of the factory stuff in the same place where RoboCop was shot? Uh, no, it's not the same okay. place because the, the geography is different. But it feels like it, doesn't it? Like, those scenes were near the end where the the... All Durant's guys are coming in, shooting up the place. It kind of feels like the ending of RoboCop. Mm-hmm. To me, it does. Mm-hmm. They're even kind of like standing the same way as they fire yeah. their guns. Yeah. Well, because you have like the the villain is an industrialist who wants to, you know, create, raise the old town and build like a yeah. new uh, shining set of skyscrapers. Like OCP? You know? Right. Like in yeah. RoboCop. That's, that's the other thing thinking. is the future yeah. city. That's yeah. where the more RoboCop angle comes in. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of Phantom of the Opera, maybe, in yes. the way that the guy looks in the doomed yeah. romance. I mean, that's yeah. maybe, well, I wouldn't even say that that's exclusive to this no. superhero story. The idea that, you know, he was in love, he was going to get engaged, and now because he's horribly disfigured, he can't, you know, mm-hmm. uh, get the woman that he, he loves. Yeah. Um, but they even give him a, a bat cave in this movie, complete with 
Uh, pigeons flying up instead of bats. <laughs> <laughs> it's his own version of the bat cave that he sets up. So what was the deal that happened? Like, I mean, okay, so in the 60s, obviously, you had the Batman TV show. Big, yep. bright, colorful, funny. Bam. You know, Pow. Yeah. Pow. <laughs> and I don't know if, I mean, obviously, that's not the earliest incarnation of uh, superheroes on screen no. because you had Superman, you know, the Max Fleischer uh, cartoons and, and the, the TV, TV show. show. But okay, so... Actually, uh, like a uh, cinematic Big screen, cinematic superheroes. Yeah, you had Superman in 1978, right? That esh- issued in or ushered in the modern era, mm-hmm. or was like the first. Was it the first superhero movie? I mean, it was, back, it was Superman versus the Mole People in like the 30s, right? Or something yeah, like that. But I guess the I can't, Swamp I Thing can't came that. after that. Yeah, right? that was all later. That was. And then that there was, was like the, the Punisher and a Captain America and, you know, some right. through the 80s. But like it really got clicking with the uh, Batman movie in yep. 1989. And this is like from that era. And then there was like superhero movies mm-hmm. throughout the 90s. You remember Condor Man? <laughs> no, you need to, you need I list, Since you just came what? up with that one, you need to list more. Did they make a Condor Man movie? They did. Condor oh Man God. was an original uh, idea. It was uh, from Walt Disney Pictures. I have a look. Oh, oh. oh gee, here we go. Wow. All right. So in the 80s, oh, shit, I, for, I forgot about Okay, so so 80s uh, comic book heroes. Okay. The highlights. Superman, Condor Man, the original, you know, like uh, original idea. Swamp Thing was based on yep. a comic. The Toxic Avenger. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. And Batman. In the 90s, all of a sudden there's an explosion. You got Dark Man, the Giver, the, the Rocketeer. Giver. The Rocketeer. The Crow. The mm-hmm. Shadow, okay. the Mask, yeah. Tank the Girl, mask. Tank Superhero, girl. Tank comic book girl. property. Yeah, yeah. Judge Dread, the Phantom, Dredd. as Michaela said, yeah. Spawn. Spawn. Yeah. Ah, who could forget that? Blade. Seminal classic. Mm-hmm. Blade. And so mm-hmm. Blade mm-hmm. begins like Marvel's like, we're really getting Spawn's into like grabbing our, properties, put some money behind it. Yeah, because Spider-Man comes after that and the X-Men. Yep. And away you go into the 2000s and then. You know, it's comic book superhero movies every week. Basically. At the box office. So I was curious what was, or what you guys think was going on that, like, you know, the bright, poppy 60s Batman era, that's what a comic book movie is, or superhero. Mm. And then by the time you get to the late 80s, 90s, every single one of those, I think that I mentioned, Spawn, The Crow, mm. Uh, the Shadow, a tad darker. the Giver, Dark Man. What's going on in the Zeitgeist at the time, or what? You know, why are they all like dark gothic? Were we used heroes? to a history of these superheroes being bright, shiny figures in the comic books? Like, not necessarily. I mean, Superman was. How dark did he get in the comic books? Back not then? at all. I mean, I he died, think. but that's about it. He's always been kind but of a bright, shining beacon. That was a huge thing, though. Right when, they, when he when he died. Right, and that was. So that's, wasn't that. L- that was, was that 90s? Was it like 94? Late 80s, early 90s, I thought. I wonder, well, the yeah. Crisis on Infinite Earths where they killed Supergirl, mm-hmm. that was 85, I remember, because mm-hmm. I or 86, because I bought that one. And then they killed The Flash. Mm-hmm. And that was when yeah. they started doing that, you know, hey, we can actually kill off our comic book heroes. 93. 93, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's when the comics went dark when the movies did. Like, everything yeah. just went dark. Right. Do we blame that on Tim Burton? Because I, I, I mean, <laughs> Batman's a it's a darker character anyway, but he kind of took that and molded it to his mm-hmm. sensibilities, mm-hmm. in which you know are dark as it is, dark and twisty. That's you can you can that describes you know kind of his aesthetic and just the way he makes movies anyway. Literally, German expressionism. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. very much indeed. Yeah. He loves the German expressionism. Yes, he does. Yeah, the movie Batman has that look of. Um I suppose German ex- mm. expressionism, but it's mm-hmm. also that um, part two, even more so, like World's yeah. Fair kind of, yeah, like, yeah. all that future, like, right? What do you call that? World like of Tomorrow. A, yeah, you know what kind I'm saying. Of, yeah. Where like the skyscrapers yeah. go up forever, and they have the uh, you know the bridge that mm-hmm. connects them, and you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. I got you. Yeah, because it's stuff like from Metropolis or whatever. I, was say, but I guess it, you're going yeah, still back think to of Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah. German, expressionism. German expressionism. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. <laughs> Indeed. Well, Batman had gone dark in, uh, in the comics. Uh, there was the uh, Frank Miller, The Dark Knight um, Returns, Returns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that I think like A dramatically Batman. changed Batman's character. When did that come out? So I think that was like eighty-five. Give me a decade. Five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. like a four-part issue yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. 85 was a good year. Or was it a whole, maybe it was a 12-issue <laughs> run. I'm not entirely sure. Now I have the collected trade right, paperback. Right, everybody's got but, the trade paperback now. Yeah, 
So that like presage the entry into, hey, everybody's going to have uh, like a dark. I forgot to mention RoboCop on there. He would be a yeah, comic book. Very type true. Very hero true. He fits in. That they made up out of whole cloth. Okay. So Sam Raimi, well, he wants to do Batman. They're doing yeah. it. Wants to do the shadow. They won't, won't let him. To him. Yep. So he says, I'm going to create my own and I'm going to create Dark Man. All right. So what was the, I heard something about the process uh, in the, the writing of this movie. What it did was you like, hear? I heard something like Sam Raimi himself did something like 12 drafts and other writers are brought in. Who's credited on this? Well, uh, I think story by Raimi. It was like, there was five like five names. Five or six. Yeah. Screenplay right by yeah. uh, Chuck Farrar and Sam Raimi and Ivan Raimi and Dan Golden and Joshua Golden with an uncredited rewrite by the Coen brothers. Really? Really? Yes. Huh. Huh. Yeah, because they used to hang out a lot. Uh, that's who's in the... Uh, Crime Wave, the, was it? What? Crime Wave? Was that the... Was that a Sam Raimi movie that the Coen Brothers uh, co-wrote? I think so. I think so, yes. Um, But they used to all... Li- they lived together at this point. It was the Coen Brothers, Sam Raimi, and uh, Francis McDormand all lived in the same place. What? That sounds awesome. Yeah, I, I know, right? there. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, so they were all hanging out. That's, that's a reality show I want to watch. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, Coen brothers in the uh, Evil Dead car that you see for a brief second during the highway scene where he's dangling above the cars and everything. Where huh. the car oh, really? hits. in Dark Man. Yeah, in oh, Dark Man. That's oh. that's the Coen brothers driving the car. Oh, huh. and that's where <laughs> that's the car awesome. makes an appearance. So wow. Yeah, uncredited rewrite by them. So there's a lot of writers on this one. Yeah. Does yeah. it feel like it was uh, passed through a lot of hands, or is this like a, what do you think, a solid, uh, I mean, I'm just curious, like, you know, what? maybe we don't know where it started or what the original idea was and why it right. took, you know, so many people to reshape it. I mean, not knowing anything about where the movie, kind of, what what it started out as versus what we got on screen, like, I, I can't tell what would have been changed or or even what would have been kept. Like sometimes you can see pieces of like, Oh, this part was part of this, but then this part leads nowhere. You can almost see like different pieces as if it was written by different writers. Uh, the only thing I can say about this is that maybe, maybe we don't know like, uh, Liam Neeson's, uh, Peyton West, like, uh, his ultimate goal at the end, aside from saving Julie, like what, we don't know where he's going from here. Or what, you know, what he's doing besides just getting money and getting revenge and making more masks. Yeah, because uh, I mean, maybe that's we're talking about the ending too early, but well, yeah. hopefully you've seen it by now, maybe, or you're thinking about watching this movie. I but the so. idea that, you know, you get the, the hero who's tortured with a physical ailment, so yeah. he wants to cure it. Yes. Right. And he's been working on this technology to... Like basically, do three D printing of uh, organic tissue, yes. uh, skin material. This is what he's doing prior to right the. Uh, How lucky for him! Yeah, <laughs> that he gets so blown convenient. up. <laughs> yes, very convenient that he has this at his disposal after he should become horribly scarred. Mm-hmm. So that's his ultimate goal. I mean, afterwards, now he's got a, a real purpose: is to try and make himself normal again, so that he can get Julie back. I guess, but that all that does kind of run. Uh, counter to what he actually states at the end of the movie that, you know. Yeah. Peyton dead. Yeah. 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 I mean, he says he's gotten, it's just, I guess the story is about him discovering, um, I mean, he's afflicted with, uh, you know, after being um, uh, exploded, after being blown up. (laughs) Way into the sky, like hundreds of feet into the air. Yes. And then lands in a body of water. Oh, that was fantastic. It was great. Um, that's the swamp thing opening. Well, he doesn't get blown up. He gets blown out. It's yeah. the same thing. He's oh, yeah. a scientist working on a serum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, the bad guys come in, blow the building up. So it's He's like on serum fire. And he goes in the, in the swamp. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Huh. Yeah. But I suppose the story is about him learning to accept what he has become because I don't think he can – he can make himself look normal, but he's not going to be normal. Like he says, it's about the, the person inside began to change and he realizes he's not gonna be able to fix that he can put new skin on but you know he's kind of deranged at this point well there's a there's an explanation that the movie gives for this which is like one of the i guess it's you're trying to give a guy who's uh you know he's got a look because he's deformed right Mm -hmm. a look at design for a comic book hero right so he wears bandages and he wears the phantom of the opera get up right he's got the 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 cloak. cloak and the hat and yeah but to explain how he can be like somehow 
uh, more than just a man, right? Yes. The superhero aspect of it. He, uh, because of he's burned over most of his body, the doctors that find him give him an operation, which I'm not entirely sure of the science of this, but we got to <laughs> assume, right, that they look this up. But they sever some nerve in his brain so he can't feel anything at all. Yeah, he can't like feel pain the, anymore. The muscles are still responding, <laughs> whatever there's right. left of them, right? Mm hmm. And he can still move, but he can't actually feel anything. You right. imagine what that's got to be like. And that's why you, uh, you know, once you hear that in the movie, you're like, wait, wait, wait. is he feeling that? Yeah. No, mm-hmm. he's no. not feeling this. Right? Feel <laughs> yeah, but he didn't really seem to require much therapy once that happened. You think? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, if you can't feel anything, you're going to have to practice, like, picking things up. Right. You, you're going to need some work. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are. hands. There's like a really rare condition actually where people don't yeah. feel pain and like it's hell on the people yeah. that have to live with them because they like a lot of them end up having their teeth taken out and get fake teeth and like yeah. just like it's like having a baby constantly because they, they can't they tell when arm. they're yeah, yeah they can't tell yeah. when they've hurt themselves yeah. so but he just jumped right back into his research yeah of course he's gonna yeah that's what he himself. lives for. It's true. <laughs> yeah, he does moan the loss of his hands, though. He does. Scene. I remember in the theater, uh, everybody laughed at that. <laughs> it is his his uh, his agony uh, scream. <laughs> is kind of, yeah, <laughs> it is kind of uh, it's a little goofy. <laughs> it, yeah, it's this a little. Is, this is the second same Sam, Sam Raimi movie. Maybe third, second for sure, where we have a character like screaming about screaming my hand. <laughs> you know, Silent like Evil Dead Two, give me back my hand. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I saw they worked in, uh, you were talking about uh, a Funny Games reference on the Rubber uh, episode that we did. Got another one in the There we go. Funny Games. Out again. Uh, (laughs) I saw a reference tonight to American Werewolf in London. They had the the nurse from American Werewolf in London, Jenny Auguter, is in this as the nurse at the uh, hospital. Oh, I didn't notice that. And at the scene where uh, Westlake escapes through the window, there's a group of people standing in the doorway, and she's like, you must let me through. And that's her line. (laughs) From the end of American Werewolf in London, where she has to get through a group of people. I'm like, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, they did. I mean, well, who else is in the movie? And John Landis, the director of American (laughs) Werewolf in London, is there as uh, another doctor. Yes. uh, Yeah. So another friend. They just all hung out back in the day. I love it. I love <laughs> so it. So awesome. <laughs> when time travel's perfected, we'll go back in time and hang out yeah. with those She's people. Yeah, start appearing in pictures yeah. of famous people. Yeah. Just like, is that Michaela? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's photo bomb. Yeah. 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 Like Nicolas Cage, am I right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Vampire. He's, been, he's already been doing <laughs> it for two hundred years. <laughs> Is he a vampire? I don't. Uh... There's yeah. a picture oh, yeah. online there... of like a soldier from like the Civil War that looks, <laughs> that exactly, looks exactly like, like Nicolas yeah. Cage. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I thought there were a couple other ones too. Like, Why did you say Nick Cage? Like... You said Jack Nicholson. No, Nicholas no, Cage. Nick, Nick Cage. Nicholas Cage. You, did you say Nick Cage? Yeah, I think so. I don't think that's you did. what they knew I'm when I was sure talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing things. Where then? Okay. Are you stroking out over there? Are you okay? I don't. Less beer this week than last week. If you endured our Ghost in the Shell mini episode, um. There will definitely be less beer, just by yeah. default, yeah. I would feel. Yep. Uh, so the villains in this movie are uh, Larry Drake. portrayed by Larry. Well, yeah, okay. So Larry Drake is Durant. Robert G. Durant. So who is he? What's his deal? What's his deal? dealio. As an actor or as, as, in, a character? as in Robert G. Durant? He's kind of the muscle for uh, Strack, I guess it is. Strack's the guy who's uh, grabbing the property and building up the new city. And... Uh, 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 Durant is his muscle. Is he's uh, that's basically it. Yeah, he's like the well-heeled. Uh, his might be gay muscle. Yeah, who so has <laughs> yeah. his posse of people, including uh, Ted, Ted Ray. Ray yes, as his uh, in there, and Nicholas Worth interest from Swamp Thing. The fucking bald guy. guy. Ah, yeah. Well, like, yeah, he was Bruno or whatever in Swamp Thing. I've never seen Swamp Thing. Oh, okay. Well. Oh. We'll have to fix that on the Saturday I guess Night so. Creature Show. I mean, I West think Craven movie. I've seen bits and pieces. I'm sure there was a creature featured where it did Swamp Thing, and there was a Swamp Thing too, right? Yeah, the yeah. Return of yeah, Swamp Thing. Yeah, the Return thing? of Swamp Thing. With I'm sure that was, yeah, I'm That's sure that was uh, running at USA <laughs> at some point. <laughs> that one is not good at all, but it's got uh, an awesome first one Swamp good? Thing suit. Yeah. Why haven't we brought Swamp Thing back to the... the I'm still waiting yeah, for kinda... Jared Sin <laughs> mf <laughs> Well, you're waiting for that for the, the free show. One. I'm yeah. wondering why there isn't a Swamp Thing remake since oh, we're going yeah. back to the comics. Well, now that R-rated movie, comic book movies are 
being more financially successful. I'm sure it's not far away at this yeah, point. Yeah, somebody will you haven't that made out. it yet, Colin. There you go. There you go. Swamp Thing. Somebody will find that and be like, I love Swamp Thing. I love Swamp Thing for years. I'll make it. And yeah. they'll have to make it significantly lower budget, I think. And then when you mm-hmm. can't do it, then you'll have to go to Marvel and get Man Thing. Man uh. Thing. <laughs> Swamp Things. He's not as cool. <laughs> Lesser uh, cousin. Man, When do we get uh, Man Bat? I want yeah, a Man Bat. Man Bat. When do we get Man Bat? That'd be yeah. great. Bring that one in, yeah. fucking Zack Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> See, they never do the comics like I was reading, House of Mystery and uh, Tomb of Dracula. and. Uh, oh, you got it? plenty of Dracula movies. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolf by Night. Yeah. Okay. Those are all Marvel, I think. Well, then he had Blade and he was hunting down the Werewolf by Night, probably. Yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay. So Robert, Dark Man. Robert Durant. Robert Durant. Uh, this was before or after Dr. Giggles? I, I'm, after? We asked no, why, because before. Larry Drake, who plays Dr. the bad Giggles. guy here, is Dr. Giggles. He was on L.A. Law. Oh, yeah. For a very long time. And a great horror movie made for TV that you should check out if you haven't seen it called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, where he also that plays. awesome. It is very good. He is it? He's a... Uh, Mentally handicapped fellow he did this in like 1981, and then ended up playing a mentally handicapped guy in L.A. Law for. All oh, right, huh. yeah. Doctor Eels was 1992. Oh, so he followed this. up. So this was his uh, ascent into yes, cinema. Into cinema greatness. I think is what you were going to say. <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> yeah. What after that though? I haven't seen him around. What are you talking about? Dark Man Two: The Return of Durant. He somehow survived the. Uh, he gets into a helicopter crash in this movie, folks, yeah. and uh, somehow survived and comes back for the sequel. Which I think because there's two direct to video sequels. All burned and no, he not at all. Flesh masks. I'm, I think one. they mentioned in the second one that he had skin grafts to fix. Skin grafts so good that he looks just like. He did in the first movie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, pretty fantastic. Well, no. But I think they, uh, there's, like I said, there's he's two. He's not in Die, Dark Man, Die. No, he's not. No, Jeff Fahey is in Die, Dark Man, Die. Wait, who oh, plays, wow. Yeah. Who plays? Longmore Man? Yeah. <laughs> a young Jeff Fahey. Wait, plays. Uh, Dur- no, he the plays bad the bad guy, not Durant. Who plays Dark? Oh, it's Arnold Vosloo. It's Vosloo, yeah. From he plays Mummy. Wesley, yes. He's the. In those Dark two, those he two is Dark Man in those. Not yeah. as good. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I think maybe I saw the second one yeah. a long ass time ago. There's that one where he's, uh, I mean, there becomes a romantic story about he falls in love with, no, that's the third one. He falls in love with Jeff Fahey's wife, and uh, and uh, then at some point he perfects the skin. Um, but then I would hope. He does. He comes up with permanent skin, but then everything's destroyed, and he's only got like a small vial of it to fix his face. But then the woman he loved, her daughter, gets disfigured as they're fighting the bad guy at the end. That's not for you. You want that one? Sure. Here, there you go. <laughs> well, you that. say fix the skin. What are we talking about here when we say he's got to fix? What, what are we talking about? Like his experiment? Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, his whole purpose is to try and come up with a, a synthetic skin that lasts. I mean, he finds out the problem is that it doesn't last in the daylight. So his whole thing is That's to try and figure out. 99 minutes. 99 minutes. Exactly. I love that stuff in <laughs> science fiction. Yeah. Movies. 90, yeah. It Why 99 minutes? It just sounds good. Minutes and 99 minutes. Melts. Looks good. Yeah. And then it melts. So they're trying to figure out how to do that. And so he's still going throughout the movie trying to figure that out. But uh, when he's trying to infiltrate Durant's gang, he's able to make masks of his of the members of his crew, infiltrate to steal money, I'm guessing, to buy more equipment and to make it. I guess that's his ultimate goal. I suppose. Right? Mm-hmm. That's, see, that's also not clear why. He, he's just getting revenge for them killing him. Right, I guess so. Because then he can steal he's it. He's got this, well, they say that he, uh, because, you know, he doesn't, he can't feel anything, then his emotions are getting the better of him, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And he's also uh, got unchecked adrenaline. Yes. Running through his mm-hmm. system, which that's makes why he's him so strong. super strong. That comes into play in the third sequel. Well, I would hope so. They try and steal his dark manness. And put it into other people, <laughs> make soldiers. So is his superpower that he can make, you know, uh, flesh masks of anybody? And, and really that's one of his superpowers, too. but he's yeah. also very strong. And he gets those, like, seizure-like Hulk out. Moments. Yeah, and he does yeah. Hulk out. <laughs> take, <laughs> take the fucking elephant. Yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> I got the elephant. Take the fucking take the elephant. Fucking, take it. Take it. Which was <laughs> always... <laughs> got a big laugh. Yeah, it, yeah which was always <laughs> take the fuzzy elephant in the USA. Oh, oh take God. the fuzzy elephant. <laughs> which was, so when I first saw this movie uncut, I'm just like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> What? 
Mm-hmm. He's like uh, he's much like Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future, where like you know how like if you call him chicken, he like freaks out. Yeah, you know? like this guy, Dark Man. It's like if you call him a freak or like a circus freak or anything like that, he like <laughs> seizures out. It's not just he gets mad; he, he like he strips seizures, seizures yeah. it, like, like the, a rage the, seizure. Yeah. The, the, his psyche is cracking. Yeah, yeah. It like, shows like puppets and everything. Yeah. It's crazy. It's done yeah. through like old timey montage or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or, it's not montage. It's like, right? No, but it's it like, like flashbacks and cut it, cut ins super- and. Yeah. Like yeah. Superimposed images yeah. of clocks and all this stuff flying, like weird puppets and shit. Which yeah. is all, which is actually <laughs> deleted stuff that they filmed for the actual movie. It's like those cool. were supposed to be scenes. This is a part where he's like he got his head in, a, in like a puppet thing, where he's kind of <laughs> just dancing, oh, yeah, around, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was actually part of the movie oh, at one God, point. That's amazing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, creepy. It's like Dolly Vision. It's like it's Sal- weird. everything becomes a Salvador Dolly paint, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. for like a brief second, for like yes. a second. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's gone. It's weird when I saw that. I thought he would. I thought Raimi was doing like an homage to because it feels pardon me more maybe because of um you know it's a mad scientist story yeah. in a laboratory you know it and there's you know storm clouds and lightning it's like this is there he's going after like a universal uh monster movie yeah aesthetic. like the change i suppose because it's a universal picture also yes. i'm always yeah. looking for that in sure their, in their we only movies. saw that logo what Three times before the movie yeah. started, because yeah. there's the old one, and then there was the new one, and then there was the title card too. Yeah, yeah. that was their special just in case. Yeah. You didn't anniversary know. Uh, logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, look at our history. But yeah, so I, I, but I'm, I can't, I'm struggling to remember a 30s Universal movie or anything from that era where you actually had all those superimposed things flying through. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like The Wizard of Oz, maybe when she gets clocked on the head and. During the uh, the tornado, the tornado sequence. Yeah. Yeah, 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 a little bit. That makes sense. But yeah, I can't really think of much else. Okay. I always within a whirlwind. It always. That's why I don't know why I was getting that vibe. Yeah. You know, if the vibe was just coming from the aesthetic of the movie, or if it was like, oh, he's doing like a homage yeah. back to old. I'm sure it's some. I mean, filmmakers like Raimi, I'm sure, know something that we don't. Like, fucking Tarantino has just a, a litany of old movies that he's seen that he's pulling things from and putting into his movies. Some things that, you know, we haven't heard of. I'm sure there's plenty of that Raimi's doing, just pulling it out. And it's like, this is an homage to this. And I'm like, I've never heard of that movie. Thank you, Sam. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's doing something like that. And his editors working in footage from Lucio Fulci's The Beyond into Spider Man. It's a fantastic film. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bit of this in Spider-Man as well. Is there? Like, yeah, because this is, I mean, it's, it's like showing like the inner nerves of like inside his body, oh, like kind of right. reacting and going crazy. Yeah. That's the point of these is just kind of, mm-hmm. it's like diving in, showing the circuits lighting up and him going crazy. <laughs> that also shows up in Spider-Man at some point. All right. So at some point, Sam Raimi had a very distinct visual style, right? Yeah. Which is very present in this movie. I mean, obviously anybody who's seen the Evil Dead movies, you know, is he likes aware a, of He likes a whip zoom. He likes yeah. to zoom in real quick. Well, he did that one at the very beginning. I think it was the first like showy camera move that yeah. he did was uh, Durant is facing off against this other gangster, you know, whatever. Eddie band. Black. Right. And <laughs> he... Uh, that's right. And we established that he was from... Crap, I can't even remember what the movie was now. It was... <sighs> You said it wasn't Lord of Illusions, right? It, it wasn't because I'm seeing him as the guy with all the knives in him, but that's not it. It's first, Prince of Darkness. He was the first line of movie. Oh, the fr- this movie is the best opening line ever because he's an asshole. <laughs> because he's an asshole. Yeah, and if he doesn't like that, tell line. him fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't like that, which can I, which I can already see you don't, <laughs> we'll cut your balls off. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Black. But when he's facing off with him, like uh, Eddie Black's got like I got three. You hear my yeah. three principles. And so on each one, when Sam Raimi cuts back to Durant, there's like this push in, but yep. it doesn't go all the way up. Like the first no. one, you know, is like a little bit, a little bit, and then back to Eddie Black. Number two. Then a little <laughs> up bit more. to Durant again. It was like, oh, <laughs> Number oh three. that's a Sam Raimi movie yeah. right there. Mm-hmm. Everybody else would just do the one yeah. slow push in and you just Not cut Sam. back and forth. <laughs> this one has like push in, stop. Mm-hmm. Push in closer, stop, and then the last one's like almost going up the guy's yeah. nose, and then you know? he does it backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's cutting his guy, fingers yeah, off, yeah, and he I does it to Eddie Black like, going oh, in. Yeah. That's planning, right? Yeah, there. Nice. he's got it. He they don't just make doing. these things up. No, they, they plan they them have, out. They know what they're doing. And lots of Dutch angles where you actually see the camera move into the Dutch angle instead of just yeah. cutting to mm-hmm. it. Like a lot, a lot of fast moving ones too. We did one where he like focused. There was a focusing thing where like went into focus. If you can understand from that. 
this means we're. It wasn't no, just that's, a, yeah. that's the universal focus into focus. Sound. Right, that's, we have our sound effects. <laughs> into focus. What was it? The '90s logos were. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Everybody knows yeah. what they mean. Yeah. 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 But he's, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say he did a funny one later too, where um, I think they're uh, in the lab when they're beating up uh, Peyton, and uh, they've got his uh, lab assistant wrapped in the plastic, and they shove him into frame, mm-hmm. and then yeah. bring him back yeah, yeah. out, mm-hmm. stuff like well, that. Even when they're fine. beating up uh, Liam Neeson, and the, you know, it's like he's putting the guy's head through the or Liam Neeson's head through the glass. Right. There's, he's got a set of cabinets, and it's like through glass number one. The camera's behind the uh, the cabinet, like mm-hmm. moving along, yeah. and tracking. Mm-hmm. And then there'd be those moments, yeah, where, uh, you know, like a, one character would suddenly appear in a shot or the camera would move to yeah. reveal somebody's in the shot and then swing the other way. And, yeah. You know. He has a very active camera in the way he shoots. Mm-hmm. I would almost describe it as like a, it's like, it gives the sense of like a zany. Um, yeah. Right. Zany a good mm-hmm. word. I to feel describe yeah. like the mood of a, or, or early Sam Raimi. Yeah, yes, definitely. I think I would think so. Does that play at odds against the subject matter of the movie? I think it might a little bit in this one. To me, I think it feels like it does because it feels I can't tell if he if like the subject matter is ended up being more serious as compared to his camera work. Maybe not as zany as you would think it is, but it feels because it's a tragedy, basically. Right. The story, and, right? and there's a love story and everything in it. Like it doesn't quite fit together for me. I mean. I, I like the movie, but it, it doesn't like that kind of feels a little off. It does feel like they were, I mean, cutting away at this movie or like things were changing on the go for this. I don't know. I mean, it seems like some of that stuff. I mean, the idea that one of uh, Durant's henchmen has a wooden leg, right? Mm-hmm. And then that leg ends up being a machine gun that they can pull <laughs> off. And, you know, so what yeah. does the guy do while his leg, you know, where his compatriots are just mowing down the bad guy or the uh, you know other gang? Yeah. He's hopping around on one leg. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense because yeah, he had to sneak a, a gun in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make sense at any point later in the movie. No, because like then just, you just see, like, every, you know, it's like, who's yeah. in my apartment when, yeah. you know, coming to get me? There's a guy holding this gun leg, and then it pans over, and then there's the other guy glaring at the camera, oh, and then he hops. Right. Because he doesn't have a leg. Yeah. Right. It's great as far as, like, setting up characters to remember. I mean, especially henchmen that you're not going to give a lot of backstory to. It, it gives them, like, I just one identifying characteristic. I mean, even the name, Smiley, is the guy who's got the crazy smile. Mm-hmm. The guy who's got the leg that's a gun, the bald guy. Like, they have at least one characteristic that will differentiate them so that you know who they are. And they're not just all melding together into faceless bad guys, which it works for that. And his camera style works, like, in the scene where they first go to the lab and beat up Peyton. Like, it works for that in the introduction when everybody starts coming in. Like, you're talking about the Dutch angles when everybody starts walking in, the uh, light being lit from underneath um, as they show everyone coming in. Like, his camera work works for scenes like that, I think. Very well. I feel, I feel like it kind of mirrored, uh, like, comic book panels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, th- I mean, if that's what this is. This is... a comic book movie yeah. so it makes sense in that essence but it, it was hard to tell the feel of the movie yeah it really was like i couldn't tell if it what, was serious right. or if what it was tone comedic. he yeah. really wanted to get yeah I, it definitely worked if you're trying to pull that that uh comic book panel feel across mm-hmm. but as far as the feel of the movie you can't necessarily translate comic to movie in that aspect as far as like photography it just it doesn't translate as well. Yeah. With story that happens later on. Yeah. Certain things don't mesh well. It's like, you get this here, and you're like, oh, now we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels a little weird. Yeah. Do you think Robert Rodriguez really likes this movie, and that's where he got the <laughs> idea for the machine gun leg and Planet Terror? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's possible. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I'm going to say yes. Because yeah. that's just a memorable thing. Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. Machine no gun right. leg. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Machine gun leg. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. It was good uh, talking to you. Well, there was something that you said that, like, triggered, and I can't remember. You, what oh, I triggered I you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I triggered you. Oh, no. I didn't mean to. Triggered a thought. Mm. In the old version of triggered. Uh, uh, yeah. Wooden legs, uh, camera work. Mm-hmm. Comics. Uh, Comic panels. Comics. <laughs> nope, it's not coming back. Uh, right, Dutch right. angles. Suddenly it'll be there. Lab assistants, fuzzy pink elephants. Whis- Whiskers the cat. Whiskers. Whiskers, Whiskers the cat. <laughs> yeah, no, he has a cat. a cat to keep him company. He but, does. It's uh, Church it's from Pet Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. Is it? 
I kind of, I mean, look like if that, what near Wait, when did that come out? Because yeah, I was going to say, let's look at that. I mean, again, <laughs> oh, shit, we, we just I'm right went, here, 89. 89. Oh, went 89, perfect, that's the cat. probably the same that's cat, the cat. it has to be. Oh, another chapter in, uh, it's, this is probably going to be the biggest chapter, Cats of Film. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> just because. Because but, it's us. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. So we'll add that to it. Uh, we now have the church mm-hmm. as our, what we'll the add to the monkeys and the We got monkeys, mice, the mice, the scorpions, definitely scorpions. Oh, yeah. And now cats. You're going to have to go deep cuts and back a couple episodes to get the entire to get the, yeah, yeah, the joke on that yeah. one yeah um i was hoping he'd go on mike tyson with those pigeons and like keep them as his friends and right yeah the, like, like, it was nothing. so dramatic how they like flew up and then that was it that's all that was there for <laughs> trying to think if there was kind of a side plot in either of the other two because he's a very lonely man <laughs> the yeah, other two like, did he keep a pet i think did he have a dog at one point he may have had a dog that he just oh, like yeah. talks to angrily at some points Aww. he's much calmer in the other two movies which i don't <laughs> like He's really crazy in this one, comparatively. Especially when he does that, see the dancing freak. Yeah. Oh, okay. He does that little With dance. With the fucking funnel on top yeah. of his yeah. head. That was great. Yeah. And it comes, like, out of nowhere. But, yeah, I mean, it's just his frustration. But, right? yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. His and entire... he's been triggered again. Well, we'll just call yeah. him triggered yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He's been triggered again, so he's kind of freaking out. And he's got to calm himself down. Well, he's got reason to because his girlfriend is now taking up with. Okay, so here, here's Strack. a question. Well, uh, so Holly, this was your first time seeing it was. the movie. Oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. based on, I'm just curious the way the plot works out because <clears throat> we're introduced to the villain of the movie, Durant. He's the villain. All right. He's, well, okay. I, yeah, one of two. At the be- well, right. He's the, the main this one, is one to start I'm off driving with. towards. Like okay. the villain, I suppose, is the guy who dies at the end of the movie. But we're introduced at the beginning of the movie to a the heavy, right? Mm. Yeah. Of the movie. And then you're introduced to, um, well, it's, it's not her boss, right? She's a lawyer. Yeah, she works for Strax, right? The developer. I think she works for a company that works for Strax. Okay. She's a she lawyer. Was, she's yeah. tangentially she's an attorney. related somewhere. She's probably she's yeah, their works. lawyer yeah. working yeah. for yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. She has uncovered... A memo, yes. the Belisarius memorandum. I'm glad you remember that because I was going, what the fuck was it called? Uh, it was a memorandum Belisarius. because was, we yeah. heard it like 8,000 times. Yes, the Belisarius <laughs> memorandum. And it details some type of uh, financial transactions. Yeah. Right, yes. that shouldn't have Pay been going on. Off. So the question is, yeah. when you meet him, and he's basically making these veiled threats to her, but it's done, the actor delivers it in a way that's kind of like, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, it's there's weird. this other guy who's a competitor for our business who, you know, his name's Durant. We've met him already in the movie, yes. so we know what they're right. talking about. I'm curious if the movie, the structure of it works to hide the fact that he is actually the main villain of the movie or based on the way that movie plots go, where you like, right at the very beginning when you saw him, you're like... That's the actual bad guy. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. right away. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's just, yeah. So we just expect that <laughs> yeah. now, right? <laughs> I think we can, but also I think we can tell, like, I mean, this movie when came out Tree of the 90s. When shows up in the, in the, <laughs> of the Phantom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I think that's the thing. Like, you can, it's a movie from the 90s. It's kind of in that vein. Like, you, kinda, you can kind of figure what's happening at this point. Like, a lot of these movies kind of shared certain traits. So mm-hmm. we're kind of looking for that already. We're like, all right, we know it's a 90s movie. It's superhero-ish. Something more is going Going on. So if they introduce that character, eh, odds are something's going to happen I with him, and he's going to be a bad guy. I understand because he's developing this this like Delta City, yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they act like it's it's this horrible thing, and I don't know why. They act like it's like what he's who, doing. Who does? Like I, I got the impression that we're supposed to not want him to build it, and I, I didn't really understand why. I. Th- Okay, this is a bit of a reach because I'm having to read between the lines a lot here on this. All right, yeah. I think it's because if he builds this weird future city, right? Right. It brings in more of the mob people and they can, like, take over the city. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, just it's like a, Delta City. Like, yeah, yeah, like they can just install the mob yeah. people as they're building the city. Like, yeah. so Plus there's going to be all those workers there. and you got to entertain right. the workers yeah. and they're going to need, you know, the drugs yeah. and prostitutes and all that. Do we, do we know this for sure? But I'm sure he makes <laughs> a lot of money building the city. city. That's what they said, RoboCop. It seems yeah. like it applies here. It, uh, it seems like it shares <laughs> some uh, qualities. <laughs> all right. I don't know. 
feel like it wouldn't have been terrible if the city was built. I yeah. know. Again, that's where that's where the story kind of falls off yeah, at certain points. Was, it's just like this vagueness. It's just like, ah, like, oh, what are our really stakes under- here, really? I was like, I don't really understand. Like, he bribes some people. I know that's shady, but it right, fucking but, happens, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's like we're building a deal. city that's supposed to be a good thing, was, right? And then I was like, is is Darkman supposed to be getting... Darkman. Yeah, Darkman. <laughs> is Darkman supposed to be like wanting revenge, or is he just wanting to finish his research and get skin? I don't really... I'm sure he wants revenge for being blown up, but... I think he wants. I wish his name was like John Darkman. Yeah. That would have been better. Yeah. John J. Darkman. 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 <laughs> John J. Darkman. Only, <laughs> only if uh, I think the only reason I'm thinking that it's revenge is because the first time when he sees Rick, the Ted Raimi character, yes. that's when he has his first like his colored freak out, light yeah. freak out. Yeah. Seizure. Yeah. 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 It's, so it's it, like his rage seizure. It's a rage seizure. It's a rage seizure. Right. And it's great the way he. The way he does that, because he really, it really is just colored lights and zoom ins and Dutch angles and everything. Like that's how he gets it across. Well, you do go back to more of the like going inside his head and seeing the freak out, but mm-hmm. you do get a lot of that just practically right there in camera. Just turn on the red light, zoom in, and it does Quick help cutting. if you have bombastic Danny Elfman. Score. Danny Elfman, no, 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 we haven't even no, 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 mentioned that at this right. point. Yeah. Like he wanted to make a superhero <laughs> movie so much, he's like. I need Elfman because he, he did, did that Batman. fucking Batman yeah. movie, yeah. and he did the Flash yeah. TV show. So yeah. he's the superhero guy. He is at in this point, this point in time. Right. Yeah. And man, the xylophones are everywhere in this movie. You can tell <laughs> <It's> <laughs> from the get go. What happened to Danny Elfman too? Like you listen to any of his newer stuff, it sounds Doesn't like sound like Danny any Elfman music mm-hmm. than anybody. Else. Like he has lost that Danny Elfman, Maybe. or people don't want it, or yeah. or he did it as much as he. Like now he's like I got to do something like right. I'm growing as an artist. But there's also that like he, maybe yeah, he doesn't want to do it forever. And he's like, I kind of like that he's changing his stuff up. Like yeah. I, I love when I see a movie and I see a music by Danny Elfman. I'm like really right. Awesome. I, someone recently was just like Danny Elfman did the score. Yeah. All right. I thought that uh, what was I watching? Um, it's surprising. Fuck. It was like Silver Linings Playbook or something. I think he did the music for it. Yeah. And I was like really. Huh. What? Weird. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. really crazy. Yeah. He didn't do. Especially because David O. Russell contact, re- leans on like scores so much. For yeah, yeah. not scores. Oh, he leans right, on yeah, soundtracks okay. so much. Like which, soundtracks are always. Which there was a lot of soundtrack yeah. in that movie, so it wasn't a ton of score. But right. what it was, I was like, I didn't know that was Danny Elfman. Man, David O. Russell hits those music cues so literally. It's he does almost uncomfortable sometimes. It's almost <laughs> Suicide Squad level. Like <laughs> this is we're literally narrating what's happening on the screen with the music right now. Right. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sometimes that bugs me. Yeah. A little bit. Well, I know Elfman still does all of Tim Burton's uh, yeah. movies, right? But like, Yeah, he does. I mean, I couldn't tell you what the theme to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory sounds like. Right. Or, you know. The music in that sucked, so. Mm-hmm. Big Eyes didn't have great music either. Yeah. And that's more recent even still, and that's, yeah. But I remember distinctly, like, Sleepy Hollow, or, mm-hmm. you know, or even, you know. I suppose this, but it's not. Tim well, this was this long, was yeah. basically just like Batman Returns. Basically, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just like the, Batman the music Returns. was almost identical. Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah, which is all right. Yeah. He did Spider Man too, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, first one. So. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I'm looking yeah. it up as we speak because yeah. I wanted to figure out what was was I just saw. What he threw? What did it watch? Um, he threw me. I saw one. Oh, it was Wanted. Um, oh, really? really? Oh, oh, he did Wanted? He did Wanted, the music for Wanted. Yeah. And he sings the title song in that. Oh, my God, that's that amazing. Threw me. Oh, really? That's yeah, amazing. look it up. Just by himself, not only go boingo. Yeah, it's just him. Yeah. He wrote the Desperate Housewives theme. That's there surprising. you go. Yeah. What? Oh. Well, the... Uh, <laughs> So in Darkman, I Darkman. mean, eventually this Darkman, Darkman, Darkman <laughs> evolves into an action movie. This is years before Taken. This was Liam Neeson, hot off of the success of Krull. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yep. we all saw that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right where he has a bit part. In the infamous movie, Krull. You could tell right then this guy is going to be a Darkman. Um, <laughs> So it's an a- it, it turns into an action movie. So it does. this is so it's the mostly his thing. stunt man, right? I would say less Liam Neeson. So how do '90s stunt work, or how does it hold up under you know today's? I mean, you I mean, can see all the seams in this movie. I mean, you can see the you can see all the green screen. Like it all is definitely noticeable in this movie. Before digital. Blue screen, (laughs) because the color matters. Yeah, well, the yeah, because you can definitely see matte lines. Yeah, you see matte lines. You can see the cut 
to, especially during the the helicopter dangling scene, Mm -hmm. you get, somebody was actually out there dangling from a helicopter going through a city and everything, but when they cut up to uh, Liam Neeson at that point, it's just, you know, from shoulders to the top of the head, and you can see that there's just, like, rear projection going on behind it, or some blue screen or something. There's some really weird angles where, like, he was supposed to drop out of the helicopter and then catch on to the hook, where clearly (laughs) he's standing on a blue screen, and they're they're wiggling the hook, Yeah, and it's the backgrounds don't are, are moving differently yeah. and don't match. There's a lot of, uh, which surprised me for 1990s that there was stop motion animation. There was. And like, you know, or claymation or whatever for was going on with his hands. Yeah, right, when they get injured shot. and when he's typing. When he's typing, yeah. yeah it's just like a good hand in one and the other one's like mm. the burnt like You can't do hand. that makeup? Maybe they wanted not, to I show the bones. And I like that choice a lot. I, I mean, I'm okay with it. It doesn't bug yeah. me that they did it, but I don't see why they couldn't do it just make up on hands and do the shot. I think he wanted to actually show like the you know, intricacies the, the, the of the burnt off hand and everything. The skin, you know, and the ligaments and all that. I guess. It, it seems like something in 1990 you should hand. be able to pull off at that point. I think it's a stylistic choice. I mean, that's Sam Raimi. This butter, is very really, true. You know? He might have done this on purpose. Be like, mm-hmm. oh, this yeah. is what I want. This is what but, I like. I mean, he's done it. He did it before Evil Dead movies and whatnot. A ton. Yeah. yeah. So, so I hit this something he, with it. Or, I mean, it something does, he likes. Again, I think this it contributes to like the Sam Raimi style of, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. of that era. Because this is before Army of Darkness mm-hmm. even, right? Because yeah. that was 90. Yeah, this was yeah. right before Army of Darkness, yes. Yeah, this got him in with Universal, and then they were able to get the rights to, uh, to do Army of Darkness mm. or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, maybe it contributes to that overall, you know, Sam Raimi-ness, which isn't so. really, you know, like, keep moaning. There's no uh, Danny Elfman anymore, and there's no Sam Raimi anymore. And yeah. li- until he did the Evil Dead, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead pilot, Mm. That felt more like old school Am Ra- is Ham Raimi. Am- Sam Raimi. <laughs> Ham Raimi. Ham Raimi. Ham Raimi. Is uh, Drag Me to Hell? Did that feel Sam very no. Sam Raimi? No. No. Not in, at all. In moments like the the um, so it's just kind of seance scene off. and whatever yeah. with the talking goat or whatever that came mm-hmm. out of nowhere is like that's a Sam Raimi. Who else yeah. would have thought to do you know? Right. And when the Lamia is like trying to get into her house or whatever, you think people don't want that aesthetic anymore? That movie didn't do well. Yeah. Drag Me to Hell. Yeah. It didn't yeah. Do well. People like that movie a lot. It's a good movie. Yeah. But people. Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have conflicting opinions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, go. All right, let's <laughs> hear it. But the the I guess you know it's interesting to see a filmmaker do you know something that defines like their style i mean that's what makes a movie by them special right Right. it's like you're going to get something that they do that nobody else does and somehow both tim burton and sam raimi it's ironic that we're talking about both of them in this era and Mm -hmm. then where they eventually went to you know i mean they eventually evolved into doing these big budget CGI spectacular right. Disney movies. They almost like and yeah, ended up in the same them, place. Yeah, they could have. Mm-hmm. You could switch. Like right. you told me, wouldn't be able to. Sam tell. Raimi directed mm-hmm. Alice in Wonderland, and Tim Burton directed Oz the Great and Powerful. Mm-hmm. I okay. Yeah, I'd be like, like how right. would you tell them sure. apart? Yeah, they're like the same goddamn movie. It's funny yeah, exactly. that they start yeah, out basically the same sad. thing with their superhero movies, and just end up there. They have parallel careers. I guess yeah, so. Do. And hmm. now we're waiting for the Sam Raimi. Tim Burton team up, which might never happen. That'll never happen. Yeah. No. What's Tim Burton doing now? Uh, another Alice in Wonder. I don't know. Wasn't there a sequel to that? Oh, yeah, yeah, he didn't direct last, that. Though. It came out last year. Oh, he didn't. He didn't direct yeah. that one though. Oh, I didn't? produced it, but he didn't direct oh. it. No. No. Not the the sure. last thing I saw was Big Eyes, and I came yeah. out like at least Sam Raimi's doing a TV yeah. show, or at least producing a TV show. Yeah, I think he just did that first episode, though. He oh, I'm sure is, he's like, executive producer, producer, on producer on it. Tim Burton just did something that we're not thinking of that oh, came I'm out sure. really recently. I think post Big Eyes. Frank and I think so. No, no, no. A lot more recent than that. Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, was, oh it, it was the, Holly, the, the Hollywood peculiar, fact check us. peculiar Children. Yeah. Oh. There you go. oh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Miss uh, Pedigrees? Pedigrew. 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 Pedophile. <laughs> Got it. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that went Is in it a very dark place because we're watching a Darkman sure. movie. I read Darkman. The, read the book. I think it's Pedigree. I mean, yeah. I'll go with the, whatever you say. Like Chico, right? <laughs> That was Carlito. Yeah, Carlito. That's what it was. was. Yeah. You believed me for a while. No one believed you, Holly. Yeah, you did. No, we didn't. All right. So, uh, what else we got about Dark Man here before we. I've seen the movie. It was Ah. amazing. That's very true. Oh, yeah. Describe this as two people who have not seen this before. 
So, you guys seem very happy. Wait, you with hadn't that seen Dark no, Man before. Seen this oh before. shit! Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. I thought it was just no. Whoa. No, I had not seen this before. Right. Wow. So after a weird high-rise building fight, which I think is a trope of the '80s and '90s as well, that right. like like on a half-built building, you know, on the Lethal Iron Weapon Beams. Three, yeah. Right. That building was. <laughs> well, even Power Rangers did that. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had a fight like that too in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like the first big fight scene after yeah. they meet Ivan Ooze. Yeah. I haven't watched it recently. Yeah. Stop looking at me yeah. like that, Colin. Yeah. You guys, even Three Men and a Baby had a fight in a half yeah. real building. <laughs> you mean the movie The Taunted? That's right. Yeah. That's right. The, <laughs> the, movie, the movie that at one point in time was Child. the most rented movie of all time You're because of that. You're goddamn right it was. Yeah. <laughs> Gutenberg bitches. <laughs> right. Anyways. Gutenberg bitches. <laughs> Short Circuit was that's, on TV the other day. Oh, and that's I a watched great movie. Oh, that's a great, that's movie. A great movie. I have that movie. It's We're really it's it. a Fisher wonderful Stevens movie. is uncomfortable to look back on it, in that movie, I, but I, not until like within the past like five years did I put it together. Yeah, that, that was I'm like, are you fucking kidding yep. me? Mm-hmm. He did that. Yep. That's uh, that's you it's know that's online with uh, what is it? Uh, Breakfast? Did, no. Yeah. What? Was it Breakfast yeah. at Tiffany's? Yeah. With, what's his name? Andy, Andy Rooney. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Sorry. Yeah. Andy yeah. Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's uh, we go up in a building for the the climactic fight. Oh yeah. In the skyscrapers. Yeah. Mm. The skyscrapers, the steel girders. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, they have free, uh, they have Francis held hostage, or Julie. Julie, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, she is both. Her real name is Francis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have her held hostage. So um, random bloke the, up there as well. Mm-hmm, yeah. You have the typical villain explaining his whole you know master plan. Yep. Yes. S- scenario. No, but does he? He basically mm-hmm. yeah. he says he's he, he been de- doing. He describes what his I mean what we already know he's been doing, and he describes his childhood at this point. I steal. And he just <laughs> It was his version of it was his version of saying, I have the high ground, Anakin. Basically. Him saying yeah. I was a kid and I used to climb these things and bullshit right. like that. His but story about Yeah. Yeah. It's but then he trap. just like claims he's yeah. God because he's like, Look at this, I built this all. This is mine. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're not gonna kill me. Basically. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, why we asked, like, why? I don't know why you antagonize you people who are there You're to not kill like you. me. Right. Who are you looking at right me. now? You see how this guy looks? He'll kill you. Yeah. And but I do like that is something I do like about the ending, though. It's like it's not something you can live with. And then he drops. And he's like, I'm learning to live with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I've always liked that. that and then his. Line. And then his. There's a lot of cheese ball lines in that movie, are, but that was a good. But line. there's some good lines that in this movie. Line. There's a lot of cheese ball stuff, but there's some good lines in this movie. I like that and the ending that. Uh, yeah, you two can describe. And then so, so uh, what? Julie is that what her name is? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so she's Julie. like, Julie. let's let's you know spend more time Julie. together. Let's build our life up to what it was. And then he says, oh, but Pey- Peyton's dead or something, right? Yeah. Something like that. And then yeah. like storms off, and you see him like pull out this um, like flesh mask with dark hair, mm, which is not mask. one we've seen before. No, it's and, new. And the hair looked very long. Yeah. When he- Whipped it out. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, and he's taking off and he's running down the streets and you hear this voiceover about how, like, I am everywhere and I am everyone. I and um, and then, you know, she's chasing him, like, pulling guys' coats around to look to see You're if she can find him. You're wearing a trench coat. You're wearing a trench coat. Yeah. Everyone in this town wears trench Can't coats find all the he's time. Nowhere. Yeah. And, uh, and then we cut to, we see the Bruce back of- Campbell, yeah. of all people... Turn around and kind of like straighten out the flesh mask and look at the camera and then keep walking. And I fucking love that ending. I thought it was great. Yeah. I knew there was going to be Bruce Campbell in here somewhere because every Sam Raimi movie has at least a cameo by him, if nothing else. So he wanted him to be. Peyton for this, but they didn't. They didn't want to put the movie on his Even shoulders. Bigger, uh, yeah, because at that time Bruce Campbell wasn't the yeah. Bruce Campbell, right? Yeah, well, I think maybe he had done. Well, I mean, obviously the Evil Dead movies, sure. but I think uh, the Adventures of Briscoe, Briscoe County, County, Briscoe County, County Jr. Jr. But oh, I don't think that show. was yeah. a big hit. But it, I mean, like everybody that I know, like seems to have seen that right. fucking yeah. show. Yeah, <clears throat> but I don't think when it was on at the time, it was a. Big I don't deal. think so. Well, it didn't get renewed. So. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Everyone it was, was one like, season, oh, yeah. Right? And I think everybody just saw the promos for the show and just never mm-hmm. watched it. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty like, sure I, I watched it, okay. but I was well, pretty young. I, mean, I was yeah. pretty young, so. I, I don't know if I watched it. I, yeah. I don't think I did. Because where did Bruce Campbell? Yeah. I mean, it, eventually just the cult of Evil Dead caught up with him, right? Enough that they said, okay, we'll put him in, you know, Army of Darkness, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because it was like Burn Notice or something by the time he actually got like a legitimate, you know, yeah. something other than Evil Dead that he could hang his hat on. So then after that, he's like, I can go back to Evil Dead. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. But they want I've satisfied myself that I can do other things. Apparently. No. Well, and, uh, and I did uh, Bubba Hotel. Yeah. 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 Give them what they want. Wrote a couple books. Yeah. It's very happy. Played a major D. 
Spider-Man. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, he was the ringmaster. And a theater, and a theater, yeah. uh, theater, uh, theater usher. usher. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I help you? It's pretty good. Are we forgetting anything about before we approach the mailbag and the wrap up segment of our show? Are we forgetting anything that you want to bring out or talk to or highlight specifically about the movie Dark Man? I don't think. Yeah, so. I have a question. Okay. okay, so they said that he burned forty percent of his body. No. We only really see that his face and like neck and hands. and hands are fucked up. That mm-hmm. doesn't seem like forty percent to me. But I'm sure there's like I'm sure it's it'd chest be great if like whatever. that was it. Like yeah. from here down, perfect. Yeah. Well, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, of course, yeah. when you see like you know up his sleeve, right? You yeah. can see his skin. Mm-hmm. It's just he's wearing right. that. Yeah. For a guy right. that was like completely on fire and got shot hundreds of feet into the air, he should be like completely burned head You'd to toe. You think so? But so if he was completely burned head to toe, and then you know he has to like. 3D print his whole body, right? Uh-huh. So would he have to have like a naked picture of him whole cell, his whole body do that? Because we see the way he 3D prints is like it scans a photo of his face, and like because there's a scratch over one side of his face in the right. photo, it can't read that. So like, so, would he have, to have like a full on? Naked oh no, this is where himself? the this is where the comedy comes in. He's like, all I have is a picture of a black guy. What do I do now? Uh, oh, I like this. <laughs> He's like, mm, all right, joke. I can deal yeah. with this. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. See, yeah. This, this, yeah. see, this is. This, why is this not? Even why was this not explored? <laughs> they had two sequels yeah. to try and explore this. Yeah. Why didn't we do it? Because Roger <laughs> Corman didn't make the movie. If Roger uh, I mean, Corman I guess so. It's yeah. I would have watched that. That would have been the Mel Brooks version. Funny. Where's Mel Brooks's superhero movie? Oh my god. That's where it would have gone. Someone yeah. get Mel before he dies. I, yeah, I was just kind of curious how he could put the mask over his bandages and all It was that. loose fitting. He just kind of it was it, it was Liam Neeson, <laughs> but he was able to pull the Liam Neeson he, mask off he and he had the... bandages underneath that. Oh, did he? Yeah, because uh-huh. he whipped it off at one point and I'm like... On the helicopter. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was figuring, because he's so gaunt and basically half of his skull is showing that when ah, you pull see, the you mask go. over, it'd be form fitting and boom, that's your skin again. Yeah. But he's got bandages mm. over the skull yeah. and the mask mm. over that. Mm. He also at one point was dressed up as uh, Durant or somebody yes. and pulled Durant's coat off and he had his cloak. Under he that. did. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. I think fully he put the fucking hat on and it was like, where the hell were you carrying that? Yeah. You don't Oh, yeah, he also had that face in there the for yeah. yeah. that whole time. The, the cloak he found in a dumpster at the beginning of the movie and decided mm-hmm. to it's keep just like, wearing I like through this. the whole movie. I'm going to keep yeah. it. Why, where great. else do you find uh, I think the crow does the exact same thing. Yeah, no, he takes uh, T-Bird or Fun Boy's coat yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Point is, he's fully dressed. He doesn't need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't need the coat. Yeah. 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 Where does he keep the hat? I mean, he didn't have the hat later on. Hey, does he? Well, he I mean, the, the last time we... Okay. No, he never pulled it out and stuck it on, Colin. <laughs> that never happened in this From movie. that, you know, holster that you have in right. your back. Yeah. He's he just like... She holds swords and hats. Do we just reach back there and boom. Do we ever see how he got the hat? Or did the hat just, like, pop into existence in this movie? Like... I feel like like that has popped into existence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why didn't we not get a great like Indiana Jones type scene of it blowing down the street? Or Seinfeld. Seinfeld type scene <laughs> blowing down yeah. the street. Yeah. And you see him reach down and then like pick it up and put it on. Yeah. It's like the look is complete. You know? Yeah. Oh, that would have been good. Like the, the, the maybe pimp the, coat like the, the pimp coat yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That was a great the episode. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Yeah. The cat should have brought it to him. He's like, <laughs> Whiskers <laughs> found the hat. should have named maybe. the fucking cat. It's yeah. Whiskers. Yeah. Whiskers. All right. Okay, so you've listened to us prattle on long enough about Dark Man, but we want you to stick Darkman. around Darkman. because uh, mm-hmm. we're going to answer some mail, and then oh, we're going to go around the table, and each one of us will review Dark Man. Who liked it? Who didn't? We're going to find out. You want to be here for that exciting portion of our show, but before then, we need to summon our mailman, Igor. Where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. Colin apologizes for last week. Igor, did you say fuck Igor last week? Is yeah, that, um, I brought his feelings. Did you? He still shows up. Okay. Oh, oh did you? Okay. So he like forced his way into the show. You're like, <laughs> fuck Igor. Igor's like, no, <laughs> I must deliver mail. Yeah. I should okay. say, like, Igor, bring us the mail. <laughs> right? Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, so, What's about this? Dark Man. Oh, Dark by the way, if you want to get a hold of us, oh, yeah. and we hope that you do, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. 
and we'll read your comments on the air. You want to tell us about something that we did a long time ago? One of our old shows that you just listened to? Please hey, do. Tell us about that, too. Uh, so for There's Dark dozens. Man, Ryan Burrett writes in and Ryan. says, I watched it maybe a year ago and thought it still held up pretty well. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, for right. our uh, Ghost in the Shell episode. Oh, God. Uh-oh. 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 You, they haven't even you might they haven't heard it yet. They haven't yeah. heard it yet. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you might regret this. Yeah. <laughs> On Twitter, Movie Guru writes in and says, uh, Rewatching the original Ghost in the Shell, the major seemed to want to connect to being a human more. Versus in standalone complex, that's the second one, where she was all internet. I expect the new movie to be scene for scene, but less interesting or cinematic. Mm. I think that's what I, he's going for. Like Maybe what we tried to articulate, that by the end of that movie, she just wants to, or I think the AI and her, they just want to be human and die. I, I, I still I remember, I don't know. I don't fucking that's, know, Colin. <laughs> I don't, we, don't, we don't know anymore. Okay. But the fact that the new one's going to be less interesting, I... I disagree with that. I don't. I don't. I think the new one will be more interesting. If nothing It'll else, be more the fact it's beautiful, captivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that story they're giving her. Oh, you were. They took your life. You had a. Family. But that's something yeah. they don't even it's give her something. that. In the they anime. don't. It doesn't make it good though, just because they. Put no, it not in good. There. Just I'm, easier to watch. Uh, yeah, I'm judging but, a movie yeah. before I've even seen it. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's and very about, true. You are. <laughs> and about our rubber Ooh. episode, Chris Huddleston. See heads. In French. I hope you like that name. I'm going to read you the translation. All right. Oh. The translation is, thank you for the surname, I think. Did you just fall for Sea Huds there? You just went, yeah, Because oh, I think we called him Sea Huds. So I saying, think he likes Thank it. you for the surname, Sea Huds. And he can speak French. If you write uh, in, we'll give you more French a films, too. please. Oh, no problem. They signed it, Sea Huds. Um, does Amelie count? That's is a French movie. Is that, yeah. I mean, but if, is that a freak show movie? Can we do La I don't know if that's a freak There's show movie. There's a lot of French extremist horror movies we can do. Yeah, is, uh, is a high tension. tension and yeah, and high tensions. Oh, yeah, martyrs. We'll work on it, Sea Huts. Uh, all right. Inside <laughs> Frontiers. Yeah. French. We'll bring uh, the cinematic universe of Alexander Aja. Aja. Oh, God. Aja. Do, we, do we not do an Aja? Aja. I think we did one. What about we? Eyes Without a Face? Oh, yeah. Eyes without, without a face. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a song, right? <laughs> Messy sea huts. What about <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> is Lars von Trier Dutch? He's not he's, French, right? Uh, yeah, he's Swedish? Danish. Oh, okay. He's okay. Danish. So, Antichrist. He was French. We'll do a lot of... I'm just going to bring some fucking whatchamacallit movies. What the fuck's his name? Oh, the joke him? doesn't work anymore. Luc Besson? No. The actor. Gerard My, Depardieu. Yes, oh, I was God. just saying. Hey, I'm just going to bring a lot of Gerard Depardieu movies. He had the greatest yeah. departure from artist. acting, though, getting drunk and pee- pissing himself on a plane uh, and cursing at the flight I attendants, and then no, that. never made a movie. Like, well, he's probably made some, but like, no uh, one gave a something. shit about I, his movies. There was like one yeah. movie, like within the past ten years. I'm just like, oh, Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, he had a he had a Hamlet. He's Great making some movies. The Kenneth Branagh Hamlet. Hamlet? Okay. Yeah, that's a my good one. Fa- was he in My Father the so Hero? So he had like a yeah. full on yeah. artist. Oh, moment. oh, yeah. He like oh, was like, like, like swearing at the flight. I am Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, and pissed no, himself on the plane. I wouldn't have scared. <laughs> obelisk movies, but they only came out. They were like Luke Masson movies. They're based uh, on a comic strip that's yeah. famous over there. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. like two or three yeah. of them. Okay. All right. So now it's time for wrap ups. Colin. Yes, what did you Sean? think about Darkman? Oh, Darkman. Um, yeah, I think this, uh, it comes off now, it's a little more quaint that I remember it. You know, I mean, it's been many years since I saw it. A theater, then VHS, and then nothing until now. Until Sean brought the shiny new shiny Shout Blu-ray. Factory, or sorry, Scream Factory mm-hmm. Blu-ray with custom artwork on the video box. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, wait, 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 wait! No, Sean's having a Vanna Bruce moment Campbell? right now. Oh, okay. you know? I thought Bruce no. Campbell was on the cover for a second. <laughs> right, I was like, whoa! Like was yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, whoa! That's it's like Bruce Campbell is not in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Selling pool. <laughs> yes, uh, I respect that it does have that Sam Raimi. You know, I mean, what you like the early Sam Raimi stuff for is like that kind of maniac energy and offbeat sense of humor. Right. Mm. This has that. This is like it's a studio movie, but it still has uh, enough of the Sam Raimi zest for, you know, the fact that I'm making movies. And isn't it awesome? I mean, I seriously hear him talking in that voice in my head. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But uh, I don't know. Yeah, It kind of does run a little counter to the the subject matter of the movie, which, like I was saying earlier, it's a tragedy. Right. This is 
dark stuff. Yeah. There's a guy who gets blown up. He's like, you know, can't use his hands, can't feel anything, loses the woman that he loves, you know, uh, loses Cripples his a All of his work is gone, <laughs> can't control his rages. And like, yeah, what's he going to do after this? He's going to go star in a couple of sequels. I mean, they're going to make a superhero out of him because that's what you do with these poor, tormented, lonely men who live in the shadows and mm. uh, rescue comic books out of people from, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Is his, like, it, the, the other movies, is it like, is he still in, like, a, uh, you know, still trying to get revenge on the corporation that whatever? I think, I think in the people? other two movies, they come looking for, or they find him. Like, he, oh, he turns into a crime fighter. he's got this technology that they need. Yeah. Oh, is he actually, it like... It feels like, uh, from what I remember, it feels like he's a crime fighter. In the right. alley and I can intercede. Like, he's and, out in the night, and for some reason, he stops people, and then... He's ends out up, in the night, or he is the night? I mean... <laughs> he is the dark. Pineapple. Yes. He was born He's the dark. He is the dark. Molded by it. I was born into it. Molded by it. Oh, I really want to do my Bane voice. Perhaps he's wondering why you would shoot a man. You have to go throwing him out of a plane. The guy he throws out of the plane in that movie, Bane, the guy, that's fucking Aiden Gillen, Littlefinger on Game of Thrones. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, because that was before he was like a Game of Thrones star. Yeah. He yeah. Yeah, you done the born mm-hmm. the second born movie by then? Yeah. The more you know. There you go. I mean that's why you listen to the free show. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Explosions of trivia and you're like, right. now I know this stuff. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh I don't know, like how deep can you go in this review? The writing is sometimes hokey, sometimes yeah. bad. Everything that Durant says I see it written as like, you know, this kind of arch villain and the way he delivers it is kind of at sometimes uh, running at odds to the way I hear it, you know, like how he not that he how he should have said it. I think he's saying it. He's acting it better than it's written mm-hmm. every time. But the lines are like. Whoa, which kind of, I guess, says something to the caliber of his acting. You think he's he acting pulls it, it better? Off. Than what it is? Yeah, because I mean, I, I, think was, so. I was hearing those lines as they're written on the page. I'm like, this is like boilerplate kind of dialogue that you give, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of, uh, well, one doesn't walk into a room without first looking into it, for, you know, whatever, <laughs> right? And he's somehow able to, I thought he was able to sell it, or at least, you know, do it in a way that was like, yeah, okay, I'll buy that, you know, that take on it. Um Liam Neeson is, I think, trying to camouflage his Irish accent by basically growling. Yes, mm-hmm. way, which I think is like an actor technique. Right? Like this, yes. Yeah, you Bale does that you too. Bring your voice down a register or but whatever. He didn't do yeah. that. Like in the beginning, when he's just like scientist guy, it was after his accident. He hits a couple of like hard. Oh, you mean, yeah, okay. the growling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, possibly. It's yeah. supposed to be he's angry. Right. Julie, take the fucking help. Okay. Well, yeah, even yeah. but even as like uh, as Peyton West, like when he comes back, he's obviously scratchier. He's just kind of mm-hmm. more up here and just yeah. So his voice does change. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. because he was uh, burned alive. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. There's that. I thought the um, action scenes now are a little bit. I mean, it's it's cool that they did these big thing you know with the the big stunt work with the helicopters some of it was like whoa they're swinging this guy around between you know city buildings mm-hmm. there's skyscrapers i noticed they closed the freeway there's no cars on the road <laughs> you know but at least they're doing all this stuff and it's like okay but is it you know Ramey's not an action director at least not at this point i don't know that he ever actually has been like mm-hmm. a you know that guy what you do best is action staging no you know um And so it kind of what I think I would recommend the movie um, because it's of its little, you know, idiosyncrasies. But, um, you know, me personally watching it now, it was like, yeah, well, you know, it's like it's not a classic. Right. I mean, it it, I don't think it is necessarily aged well enough to, you know, but it it's like a time capsule of where Sam Raimi is. So if you're a fan of Sam Raimi's work, then definitely I think you have to check it out. Um, but, uh, I don't know, comic book fans, I think you've got other stuff that you could probably go to, but I mean, I don't know. I liked it on all the viewings that I've had of it. So I'd say, check it out. I think this movie is better than its contemporaries, like the Phantom and the Shadow and those other weird, like bizarre scenery chewing superhero movies of the time. I think that it has, it has all my favorite Sam Raimi elements. Like it's got, it's just 
crazy and wacky and weird and over the top. And it's interesting to see someone other than Bruce Campbell do that. Um, Because that's all we really ever get to see is Bruce Mm. Campbell do all the weird stuff. So I I think Liam Neeson, like his body acting in this was really cool because I like he's like lumbering and hunching he's very for a hunchy lot. very yeah, hunchy very, very hunchy even when he's sitting like even they even yeah. transferred it to other characters yeah. who are supposed to be him just kind of yeah he's really tall yeah. yeah he's a very tall man you see him kneeling next to that taxi cab yeah he could have picked that thing up and thrown it <laughs> he's a very tall man yeah yeah he's very like lumbering he's very and hunchy prodigious and... in all areas I hear <laughs> and he kind of like creeps around like when he's walking like he hunches yeah. over I'm sorry I'm doing the uh, motion but yeah. you're doing like a, yeah. like a Scooby-Doo yeah. 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 yeah like a yeah. Scooby-Doo kind of like creep that's really entertaining to watch and I think like yeah I think it's really interesting to see someone other than Bruce Campbell do like Sam Raimi's weird weird stuff and I I loved it because I love all the things that Sam Raimi does but I think if I think if this movie were directed by somebody else and written by somebody else I would not really find it that interesting I think the right. only reason I like it is because it's a, so stylistically Sam Raimi um, so yeah if you're a Sam Raimi fan definitely watch it if like you're just like a comic book completist like you're gonna be like what's the point of this uh, but I mean it's worth it for the fucking carnival scene alone like just the carnival <laughs> scene because you can tell like oh no like circus freaks circus yeah. he's yeah. like already feeling weird about himself and yeah like, and it's he, fucking it's disturbing imagery during that scene oh yeah the, the mm-hmm. laughing clowns whatever the, that yeah. is it's just close-ups of distorted like faces yeah, it, yeah. Just, it, like, it, even watching symmetry. it now it's yeah. it does something where it's just like ugh like you're watching it, it it's like stop it's like yeah. a, I just saw <laughs> the devil's not too long it's like a Ken Russell movie like yeah. how we yeah. parade just a bunch of crazy stuff yeah. like around you know to offset yeah. your, the, or the character's mm-hmm. mental yeah. balance yeah. I really love the the stop motion, and I liked. I thought like the makeup on Liam Neeson's face when like he has the bandages off with it looked really good. And I think that aged the best out of anything in this movie, especially like his teeth mm-hmm. and like the way he had like no lips or anything, so it's just exposed teeth and gums, which was really comical at some points. But yeah, it was. But <laughs> Tony Gardner was the makeup. Tony person. Gardner, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But th- I I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I think. Th- yeah, I think if you're Sam, if you like Sam Raimi and his style, you'll definitely like it. Don't watch it on like psychedelics or anything, because God, I can't imagine that carnival scene if you're tripping. Like uh, so that would be like, like it already kind of feels like you are when you're sober watching right. this. Yeah, because you, you know. get yelled at him with like he's a freak. You might yeah. just sit there going, I am, I am a freak. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> oh yeah, and all those weird like puppets that yeah. are popping oh. up and stuff. Nope. It's like we're like we're trying to describe it the best we can, but you really kind of have to see that scene to get it. And yeah, the whole meltdown over take the fucking take fuzzy the fucking Take the fucking elephant. The fuzzy elephant. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird because I feel like even though we see Liam Neeson in a lot of action movies now, we never see him like snap and get crazy like he does in this movie. Yeah. No, he's yeah. always now very he's, cold he's very, when he's killing he's people. Just, I have a very particular skill. Yeah, yeah he's very yeah. reserved. Now he's yeah. just like... Yeah, this movie, he's like fucking bonkers. So, yeah, yeah I, I would recommend it. Darkman. Um, the Darkman. <laughs> Darkman. I yeah. Who is I, Dark Man? So I was the ad campaign. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I was like Liam Neeson. <laughs> it's uh, it's, uh, it's Liam Neeson. Uh, it's right there. Says, uh, there right he is. There. Mm. Liam Neeson. Whole time. Dark Man. Whole time it was him. Uh, it's, it's right there. He's on the poster. Yeah. yeah on the video box, you'll see it. <laughs> it's on the um, video art. <laughs> Darkman. Um, I thought parts of this movie were kind of slow. Um, uh, kind of hard to follow motivation for several of the characters. I really did not care for the romance. I did not buy it. I didn't feel the love. Maybe it was just she was uh, shitty. She was shitty. I was like, why are you in love she with her? Like, I don't. I don't understand. She's just kind of aloof about the whole relationship. So I didn't really buy that. It was as- because he asked her to marry her, and she said. I'll have to think about it. No, that yeah. it? No? no, that wasn't it. I oh. understand having to think about something like that. Marriage, big decision. Um, it was her in general. She was just kind of like, oh, marriage. I love you. I'll think about it. Like, And she didn't seem very... I didn't believe her. I didn't believe that she really loved him. And I didn't really believe the romance. Um, so I, that left something. I thought... Which ends up being a big part of the movie. Yeah, that's that's a big part of the movie. I just didn't buy it. Um yeah, the writing was kind of hokey in a lot of parts. There were some good lines. I wasn't crazy about Liam Neeson's performance. I mean, even though he, you know, did what he could with what he had. It was just, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't really care for it. Um, but it was a kind of a lot of fun to watch. 
and it hit some 90s checkpoints <laughs> that I love, like nunchucks, helicopters, hanging from helicopters, machine guns. There was a 90s there's, checklist. There's all a these 90s things checklist. The, the and iron girder fight. Yes, the iron girder fight. Grenade launchers. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. why bring a gun to a you know yeah. gun fight? To a helicopter fight. Yeah. yeah. Bring, brought a gun to a yeah. helicopter yeah. fight, yes. Yeah. So it hit some really great 90s checkpoints. This, I, I had a lot of fun watching this, but... I had a lot of fun watching this with you guys. Mm-hmm. Yes. I will mm-hmm. probably would have been bored out of my mind watching it alone. Okay. I will say you that. You gotta judge it on that. Yeah. Um, so I would say it's worth a watch. It's not really a necessity. Um, but if you want to watch it with a group, it could be fun. Uh, I'll recommend it just because it was an interesting watch. I will give it two machine gun legs out of five. Uh, all right. All right. Oh, very good. Um, watching this again tonight, and uh, I watched this probably uh, two months ago when I ordered the uh, Scream Factory Special Edition. Um, I noticed that it is uh, it is a weaker movie than I remember it being. Um, I think that has a lot to do with kind of the age it comes from. It's definitely a product of the very early 80s. Um, 90s? 90s, I mean. I'm sorry. Uh, the very early 90s. Um, but there are... There are elements of it that I do like, um, but it doesn't feel like a complete movie the more I watch it. Mm-hmm. It's a hard one going back to it. Um, it's still one I'll watch again. It might be a while before I do. Um, definitely make my way through. Like For the special edition, there's a lot of uh, uh, interviews and commentaries and stuff like that. So it's Get uh, out. On a worth- Blu-ray? No. Are you making fun of me? Fuck you. <laughs> that was really bad. Some of them don't. <laughs> yeah. Some of them don't, Colin. <laughs> but there's a lot of special stuff that goes a little deeper into the movie. There's some good, um, it's about, a, I think, about a half hour um, effects documentary on this movie, just talking about all the stuff they had to do, the stop motion, the makeup they had to put on um, uh, Liam Neeson throughout the movie. Uh, the disc is interesting. The movie has its flaws. It's definitely a product of the 90s. The story is very, it's not complete to me. Um, It doesn't, it always feels like something's missing. I think, like I think Michaela said, if it wasn't directed by Sam Raimi, it might be like maybe a direct-to-video thing. It definitely wouldn't be something that is seen as much as, you know, Sam Raimi's Dark Man. So it being from Sam Raimi and him adding the elements that he's kind of famous for does help the movie. Um, It makes it far more interesting. Um... I recommend it because it's always, um, I, I still enjoy watching this. Just, um, you know, you can, like I said before, you can see the problems with it, especially uh, in effects areas. But at this point, um, I like that. It kind of, it does date it, but, you know, it, uh, it it brings you back to a different time of watching movies. And um, I still appreciate that. It's still got some good lines in it, even though some are very cheesy. Um, but uh, I like uh, Liam Neeson. Uh, I like uh, Larry Drake as the bad guy. Um, they are kind of one-dimensional characters as you go along, but I think they're good enough for this movie. Um, I definitely recommend it. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll watch it again every every. Every now and again, Every I'll so pop this often. in. I do Trivia like this movie. For you. The uh, apparently, I read somewhere that uh, Universal freaked out because it was the lowest scoring movie I think yeah. that they ever yeah. had at a test screening. <laughs> yes, it was indeed. <laughs> it was saved by the Who Is Dark Man marketing. Yes, uh, good know. marketing for the movie. Yes, yeah. so everybody was like, "Who is Dark Man?" I mean, I remember, like, oh. you know, that was the. I may actually have a poster of Dark Man. Uh, oh, yeah, I give Somewhere. it uh, three uh, fuzzy fucking elephants <laughs> out Take of five. Take the fucking five. elephant. Take the fucking <laughs> elephant. Out of five. So. Oh, that's like pretty high up there. Uh, maybe 2.5. But 2.5 to three. Like, I'd say three. I, still, right. I like, like it. Like two it's big good. fuzzy elephants. Two one very, one? very big and one little one, yes. <laughs> there's, there's some elephants in there. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, um, did anybody see the trick in uh, identifying uh, uh, Peyton? When he was occupying some other character, did you see the trick that uh, the identifying trait that he had that you could like pick him out from the people he was impersonating? Mm. Let me catch that. They do a lot of close ups of this. His eyes? His eyes. He's got very bright blue eyes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And so, and none of the other characters did. So, and they do that. They do a lot of close ups on his eyes when he's being other characters so you can see the bright blue. Even in some scenes when he's being Durant, um, Larry Drake I, had to I wear the that. blue contacts. Yeah. 
in order to pull off that he was being, mm. he I was Liam Neeson at that it, point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I caught it this his little, viewing. His little henchman started to catch on. Yeah, yeah. He I only caught, caught that. that watching it tonight. I'm like, oh, that's the eyes. Mm-hmm. He's got bright blue eyes and he's wearing contacts, especially in that close up scene where he's smoking mm-hmm. a cigar. You can see. So he's always got the blue contacts in when he's playing somebody else. Oh. Somebody else is playing him. Now I gotta watch it again. Again, <laughs> right now. No, 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 we don't. No, we no, don't. Have to watch we're it not right gonna now. watch it again. All right. Later on, we can watch it. Oh, there you go. Next week, maybe after. Yeah. Uh, the. Dark Man 2 and 3. Just oh, yeah. Just sit down for one whole evening. Next yeah. week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... I don't know. I don't Me. want to shout Holly. it out. Holly! <laughs> Holly! All right. What are we watching next week? I can't shout all the time, guys. <laughs> Why not? Like, It'll you get do? old. They will get annoyed, and then it won't be a surprise anymore. Last time, I'm not doing this no, for another month. Last time I did it, you got mad at me because I stole your thing. I'm not saying you can do it. I'm saying I'm not going to. That doesn't mean one of you gets to replace me. Oh, okay. Right. Nobody shouts right. for like a month. Okay. And then um, you'll all be surprised. Next week, we're going to face a fear of mine from Uh-oh. when I was a kid. You guys are going to help me through it. <laughs> We're going to watch a movie that scared the hell out of me. We're going to watch 1988's Night of the Demons. All right. Oh. Yeah. All right. Who was I just talking about this with? Me? Us, us last me. week, probably. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Were we talking about it? Talking After about the drunken quickly. ghost in the show. Yeah. Podcast. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've forgotten everything of last week. Yeah. All right, Night of the Demons. All right. Uh, so, yeah, until then, thanks for listening. And again, until next week, the basement is going dark.